some of our viewers might remember that a few months ago we reviewed a biometric time attendance product which allows you to log in for companies or for different organizations to log into a building by simply pressing your thumb or one of your fingers and it uses your fingers to create an ID. It's also a clock and also a timer which is kind of interesting. Now we have a new generation model of that but instead of using your biometric fingerprint we're now using face recognition. So there actually are cameras located on this unit that takes your attendance and says okay this person has arrived at this time uh, for this employer or whatever uh, by using and scanning your face. So the technology is actually kind of similar to a Samsung Galaxy phone or an LG phone where it kind of scans and uses a camera to detect your eyes and your face and then locks you in. We're going to have to see in this review if it's fairly accurate or not. Now something like this is going to be best for perhaps uh, companies looking to get a way to uh, for you to record your attend for, to record attendance for employees uh, or for meetings uh, that you want to check on whoever came and who didn't come, who didn't come and after you've recorded an amount of data you can then export it onto an Excel document on Microsoft Excel and then you can check your attendance pretty easily. However, this is a pretty costly uh, accessory to get and something like this actually retails for about three hundred dollars on Amazon.com, which is pretty expensive, even though the technology behind it. We're looking at a generic white box. It's fully recyclable and eco-friendly, but inside you have access to the various contents. Uh, they correspond to a CD-ROM or the drivers that you need to install on your computer. It works with both Windows and Mac uh, to, again, it tells you how to explore, export the documents uh, and the attendance data that you've recorded on the unit itself. And finally, we have the device itself, which has been nicely protected in here. We'll also have access to a metal plate here, which allows you to install the actual attendance unit and mount it onto a wall or any surface that you might want to. And there's also an AC power adapter that has a fairly long cord length, which is a proprietary cord that you have to keep with you to use the device with. We have the product itself, and that's about it. Uh, the instructions and the manuals are also located on the CD-ROM, so make sure you don't toss this out. Taking a brief look at the actual attendance unit, the face recognition attendance unit itself. The hardware of the unit itself is fairly attractive and it's crafted entirely out of a plastic material with a few glass elements located on the lens and on the display portion of the product. Overall, it's not the most premium device we've seen in terms of construction quality, but it feels pretty premium and it has a nice weighty feel to it, so when you set it onto a desk, it's not going to skid around or uh, move around too much, which is always good. You can see on the front here you have access to the display, which is fairly large for an attendance unit, and when not being used for attendance purposes, it will display a clock, which we'll show you later on in this review. On the very top, there are a few LED indicators for power and also for checking if you your face has been read correctly, and down below here we have two cameras cameras for reading the design quirks I wanted to point out about this particular uh, face recognition clock is that it also features a touchscreen display so you can actually tap on the screen for your different settings and menu and navigation. Something that's interesting is because you have two different uh, kind of cameras on board it almost is a 3D experience and the reason why you have two is so it, you can't actually fool the sensor by using a photograph. I tried using the face um, or you know a face from a magazine and trying to see if I can set up someone that way uh, or a photo or a printout and the device doesn't recognize it because using two cameras the device can get a pretty accurate sense of depth so it can only recognize 3D objects or your actual face so it actually does have a security measure built in there. As you can see when it's not in use you have a general clock on here. Um, what's being picked up on camera are infrared LED lights. You actually can't see this in real life. Um, this is actually hidden and you can't see it to the naked view, uh, naked eye, but this allows the device to also operate in the dark. In addition to providing a pretty accurate and responsive camera in light, if you have a total uh, if you're in a pitch dark situation, it can still recognize your face. The infrared sensors pick in and you are using the infrared mode on the camera. So it's like a night security camera, very, very responsive. I can tap on the device in general, you can see you have a row of infrared kind of being popped out uh, just to really illuminate your face and to get that infrared because uh, I'm kind of blocking the camera right now. You can see how it's kind of thinking that it's really dark, but if I kind of turn that you know off, I can kind of see the infrared will go I'll go away after a few seconds. On the bottom here you have three, three different icons that you can press. The middle one here is actually the doorbell icon, so you can use it as a doorbell if you want to use it for that security matter. And on the side here there's one for the main navigational settings, and I can tap on that once, and you can see you have this basic main menu. 
Yeah, pressing on user allows you to set up new faces, and you can also set up a basic pin code to unlock the device. You don't have to just use your face. There's also a records which shows whenever someone has logged in and when they've logged in. Administration is just getting the settings established, so if you're in a company, uh, you can set up someone to have a code just to access that. UDISC functionality. On the right-hand edge of the unit, you have access to a door that contains a full-size USB port and also a power on and off switch. So plugging in a pair of U a USB drive, you can actually access all the data and transfer data out into a computer, uh, of course with both Mac or PC. If you want to connect it using the mini USB directly to a computer, you can also do that. The back is where the mounting goes uh, and basically it's basically it. It sits up on a desk. On the back you also find the speakers themselves as you heard with the actual uh, device. Um, it's actually going to prompt some different voice based commands as well like uh, employer one has logged in or you know you have to stand closer to the camera to get a facial recognition uh, or the doorbell as you heard so the speaker is pretty loud and responsive there's also options uh, which allows you to change the different backlight uh, the doorbell you can turn that on and off that you heard changing a language uh, the volume the auto sleep for the actual device the touchscreen here is, is actually pretty responsive, viewing angles are decent, but not terrific. It uses a resistive touchscreen display, so it takes a bit more acclimation to get used to than a capacitive one. You can also calibrate the touchscreen itself just by tapping on that, and then kind of using the red sensor there just to kind of follow along and trying to kind of calibrate the touchscreen manually, because again, you don't have a total uh, capacitive screen here, so it's not really as responsive. Security, so you can actually add a passcode or whatever. And pressing on system, you have some information about the system version and so on and so forth. Again, in broad daylight, basically the infrared lights will automatically turn off. There is a proximity sensor, and there are three LED lights on the top that shows you what mode you're in, if it's being powered on or being powered off. And again, in typical usage, you won't have the infrared lights on, you just have a typical uh, the lights will be dimmed, as you can see, and you just have a normal mode. The camera does a good job uh, in low light as well as in uh, bright light. It captures the face pretty well. As far as recognition times go, I would say it's actually pretty speedy. Uh, for me, it took only about two seconds for the camera to rec recognize my face each time. And getting the device set up is also rather quick. Uh, you simply put your eyes into a box, and then you move your eyes up and down, and the system will recognize your face. It scans your pupils and scans your facial structure, and afterwards it will recognize it pretty quickly. So whenever you stand next to it, it's also motion activated. So whenever you go into a room, it's automatically going to start. It's going to recognize you and say, Employer 1 has logged in. And then you can check in the time log and see when you've logged in at what specific specific time. So rather accurate and pretty interesting as a security tool. Overall, I'd say that as a facial recognition um, alarm clock, it works pretty well. Um, I think that compared to the biometric sensor, it's definitely a bit more interesting. And with the touchscreen display, it's a bit more higher end as well. But at $350, it's really steep in the price tag department. Um, and I think that it works fairly well. It's a high security matter. You can also set a pin code. So in addition to scanning your face, you can also enter a code. Um, so the setup can be fairly complex. So if you do need something like this, I think this is a good option because of the both night mode and also day mode and the fact that it's a 3D camera so you can't really fool the sensor um, so it's a lot of areas have been well thought out so that's all I can really say at the moment you can check out our foreign review which will be, which will be available shortly down in the description box below this has been our video first look here OS reviews of the facial recognition alarm clock thanks for watching your OS reviews